Okay, we're back to show how to get our JMRI panels or layout uh, diagram onto the TV or to the iPad or other tablets that have a web browser associated with them that you can load the uh, panels into. Examples are the large screen TV that I have here mounted as an extension of my laptop computer on the workbench which is running JMRI. Another example would be the iPad that displays the track diagram for the switching yard and engine facility on my layout which I have mounted on my valance around the railroad. So in order to do that let's go back to our Panel Pro and open our current project. In this case Panel Pro will open up give us eventually our Panel Pro control panel. At this point we have to go up to panels and open panels because we haven't told it what ones we want to work with. In this case it's going to the default directory and the only one that we've used so far is this tech video. We'll double click that and that will open up our uh, panel showing the layout as we have created it so far. What I want to do now is show you how to get this diagram onto any other display that can be operated with a web browser. Uh, in my other videos I've explained how I use a widescreen TV that's mounted on the wall and attached to my computer as a, a second screen on which I can run any web browser that I have on that computer. But I can also get it onto an iPad and so let's see how we get those done right now. The most important thing that you need to do is to go to the preferences in this particular Panel Pro setup. So we'll go to Edit, Preferences, and we'll scroll down over here to where it says Web Server. And we'll click on Web Server. Now, you have a couple of things to look at here. The most important one is that we forget about this frame server thing. I don't even know exactly how it works and don't need to. But what you need to do is click on web server. And there's some information here that is important. One, when you first come up, it'll probably say not have, it'll say disable power control in menus. That power control is to turn on and off your track power probably don't want that available in most of these menus because uh, that's not where you want to be able to turn uh, the power on and off from. The port number up here is very important and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Your display will probably not have start automatically with application checked. I would recommend that you do that so that every time you start up your layout uh, your JMRI layout connected to your to your track uh, through LocoNet or however you're connecting it, that the web browser will also come up so that you can load it into any of the displays that you're using. Once you have set these two things, we want to save our preferences. And that will say that we must restart Panel Pro. So we'll click Restart. takes a few minutes to close it, reset it, but now it's restarting. Okay, so we're all set for now. If we reload the panels again, we go up to Panels, Open Panels, Tech Video, double click, and we're back to the display that we're familiar with. And we can 
pull up any of the other items that we've previously worked with in other videos. But now what we want to do is see if we can get this diagram onto a web browser. Well, if you recall in the preferences under the web browser, and web server, there was this frame or this uh, number that was shown as a port number, 12080. That's very important. You can change that, but I wouldn't. Uh, it's not necessary. It won't conflict unless you're running uh, in the same area as a number of other uh, computers running JMRI. This should not cause you a problem, so just leave it there because most of the videos that you see with others making will refer to that and uh, that number is pretty common but we will use that 12080 later what we need to so we can we can close this now we haven't had we haven't changed anything so what we now want to do is to find out what where this web server is broadcasting its pages this gets a little complex, and I think if you just follow through on this, what you are trying to do is to open a browser on your computer. And if you uh, use uh, Firefox or um, any of the other uh, web browsers that Microsoft has, or Safari, which we will show in a minute using the iPad, when we get to the, the browser, what we want to enter into the address line is your computer's local IP number. And that's the IP address that your computer uses within your local net Wi-Fi system. It's not what you're known as by the rest of the world but only locally, and every one of your devices has this number. So we need to find that. The easiest way to find your local computer IP address on your local network, your Wi-Fi system, is to come down to the lower left-hand corner and in the search area for your start menu, type in command CMD and hit enter. That will open up the black screen that you see here where we will type in um, the word ipconfig, I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G. IP configuration is what you're looking for. Um, you type in those, those letters and hit enter. And it pulls up a bunch of numbers, most of which I don't understand, don't care about. The one that I do care about is this one right here that says IP4 address. And you come across and it'll be a number that looks like this. Yours could be very similar, might have a last digit different, but it'll be something like 192.168.1.6. Be something like that. Don't worry about the rest of them. That's the one you want. That is the address, the IP address of your computer on your local Wi Fi network. So, what we want to do then is go to the address line on our browser and type in that address. So, we'll go up here in the address line, we'll type in 192. Dot one six eight dot one dot six. From here, we need to type in a colon. That's the double dots. And then that address that came out of the web server that we showed you a little bit earlier was one two zero eight zero. I told you don't change it. Leave it like that. That's the uh, page that. The, the JMRI web server is uh, broadcasting the track uh, layout on. So we'll now type 12080. So your total address up there is 
dot one dot six colon one two zero eight zero now remember that number is for my computer you gotta look up yours but the one two zero eight zero should be the same unless you monkeyed with it and changed it in JMRI so once we get it that in there then we hit enter and the screen is going to come up with my JMRI railroad and lo and behold right here is the display for our track uh, diagram that we built earlier and in this case all we have you may have more than one I have several on my layout in the basement uh, here what we need to do is just click on this and your display will come up just as it did uh, in JMRI only this is now being broadcasters being sent to the web browser that I opened up in this case it was Firefox but notice we've just started everything up we started JMRI we've started our display and all four of the turnouts are in their unknown state but right now this web browser display is connected to the operating JMRI on this computer anything I do here will reflect in JMRI so if I come up here to this LT1 click on it it will go to the closed position or mainline position if I click it again it's gone to the passing siding as you can see by the break in the diagram up there we can do that with every one of these turnouts and if you were on a touch screen computer you could just touch it and have it happen now what is happening notice now that we've set it all for the main line going around in a circle if we now go to JMRI and look at the diagram that we built in JMRI notice that every one of these turnouts is in the closed position or the position that allows for the main line so anything we did on the web browser is done here in the diagram with JMRI and a signal has been sent to the decoder on your turnout motor to place the track in the closed position if we click here to send the turnout to the to the uh, passing siding that will be reflected also in the web browser as you can see here it has been set to the siding clicking it over here on the web browser sends it back and when we go back to JMRI looky there it's gone back so this interplay is working back and forth now between JMRI and your web browser you didn't have to do any programming you didn't have to do anything other than turn on the web server from the um, JMRI in the control panel we showed you how to do that earlier so at this point we have a fully functioning display that responds to your touch commands uh, or to your mouse commands whatever most of us if we put that uh, display onto a widescreen TV big big TV we can make it fulfill the whole the whole screen so that we don't get uh, you don't get a whole lot of other stuff up there but uh, your widescreen TV probably is not going to have touch control so at this point we don't have uh, complete operational control from a remote location we'll do that next with the iPad okay here I have set up my iPad next to the computer and I've opened up the Safari browser so with the information that we gleaned before we can now ask this browser to connect to the web server 
being broadcast by my desktop computer. We'll do that by typing in the same numbers into the address line that we did before. In this case, 192.168.16 and 12.80. As you can see, I already have used this before, so my iPad remembers that particular address. So if I tell it to go, there's the same JMRI window that we had in the other computer. There's the same display. And you'll see that it is set exactly like the uh, panel that we had set up within JMRI. And by just touching the touch screen of my iPad, I'm getting a little bit of glare trying to get rid of that for you. I'm, not, I'm probably not going to be very successful. But just by touching in the, in the spot on the iPad, you can change the turnouts. They are at the same time changing in JMRI and also on your layout. So once you have set up JMRI to broadcast the web server, everything you do on the iPad is reproduced in JMRI and JMRI sends the local net signals to transfer your information to the turnout motors, putting them where you want them based on this uh, diagram here. So very simple. Once it's set up, it works on any device that can load in a web browser. And it's a two-way street, as we've just demonstrated. In future uh, videos, I will show you how to get beyond this phase where we have just uh, turnout control. Because what we really want to get to is where we're watching all of the trains on the diagram and know where they are, which blocks they're in, and that will involve setting up block detection, uh, breaking out our layout into various blocks according to what we want, uh, where we want to see the trains, and doing other uh, housekeeping in that manner. One of the things that we'll probably want to do later is also to uh, use the uh, detection sensors to be able to set these track turnouts at the proper position when we first open up JMRI. So future videos coming up, we'll work on all of that. In the meantime, you can play around with what we've already shown you. Uh, that in itself is enough to go a long ways towards automating or at least uh, getting a better display for your model railroad. Hope this has been helpful.